I'm telling you guys, love it. All right, let's get our morning ritual done first before we get this vlog started. Morning. morning. There awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a nice day. Double, double. <laughs> Two cream, two sugar, double double. So all you guys that answered the question, you guys are right. Question for this week, what, I guess, wet rest, fuck. All right, so this week's question, what restaurant is your go-to, In-N-Out or Chick-fil-A? I know they're two ends of the spectrum, but which one would you choose? Oh, both of them are so good, you guys. All right guys, so the vlogs have taken me a little longer. Well, on top of things, guys, we ended up vlogging the RWB build. Uh, it's fantastic, I just did a raw vlog on that. Go check it out, you guys haven't actually experienced an RWB build. Amazing, Akira Nakai, that guy is, a, is an amazing car builder or, yeah, just go check it out. I'll put the link right in the corner here, you guys. Go check it out. But. Let's get uh, back on track. So it's taking me a little longer. It's because we ended up needing an extra wire harness. The one that comes with the donor car, they come with either heated seats or power seats. The plug doesn't fit. Because I actually double checked the Civic Type R. The plug is a little smaller, so we end up getting wire harness from Honda. So if you guys are doing the conversion, you will need this harness with this plug here. See how it's much smaller? And this goes into the seat position sensor underneath. Just should plug right in. So that was one. And then two, I didn't want to take the seat belt out of my own seat. So I just, we ended up sourcing a set of brand new set of uh, seat belts. Courtesy of Envision Auto Imports. All right, so this, this video is sponsored by Envision Auto Imports, you guys. If you guys need any kind of car parts, JDM or anything like that, go hit them up. They are more than help, happy to help you guys out. And that's what we did here. So just to recap, we got everything on the previous video. Uh, everything's all set up. We got our weight sensors. We got our seat position sensor all fabricated in. Now it's all ready to be installed. So let's go ahead and then pull the original seats out. I know, I know you guys are going to say, oh man, these are just fantastic seats. Why would he uh, want to switch them out? Uh, you, uh, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I know, I agree with a lot of you guys, these are just absolutely beautiful red seats. They're iconic signature color of the Type R, but we're gonna be a little bit of a unique, uh, a little more track oriented, even though I know this is gonna be a daily driver. I just wanted to stand out of the crowd. And realistically, I just wanted to help all you guys in the 10th and 11th gen Honda Civics, uh, how to mount aftermarket seats with the proper seat sensors and all the, just so that all the airbags and stuff work if you're doing uh, street driving. So that's one part of the vlog. All right, so first things first, since we're dealing with airbags, we're gonna disconnect the battery. And while we let the all the energy discharge, we're gonna go ahead and mount the seat belts that we got onto the seat rails here. Here's the part number for the uh, harness. So you need for the driver's side. And here's the part number for the seat belts if you guys wanna go my route. So based on the Japanese instructions, you have the options of mounting it here, which is this one here, or here on the seat. But the only option, well, the only problem that we run into is if we mount it here, the seat belt is way too far up. So, and if you mount it here, it's okay, but when you slide it, you see where, if you slide it all the way back, the seat belt's too far forward. It should be like around here. That's anyway, way too far down, so. We're gonna go for it, just mount it here. So we ran into a little bit of a snag, so I couldn't get the bolt in because it was just, there was no clearance. So I had to take all the bolts underneath, took the seat off a little bit, and now I snaked it through, and now we can continue. All right, there we go. So it's all installed using the supplied hardware from Bridge Japan. So she's all ready to go now.
So next up, we're gonna take out the T50s. Uh, let's double check it. They say online the T50. Okay, T50, we're gonna take all four of them out and then we're gonna unplug all the uh, sensors and then take the seat out. There we go. Okay, so now we have access to it. We're gonna go and start unplugging the seat belt. Seat belt is blue. Oh, seat belt is blue. And this is the weight, uh, this is the airbag. I'm gonna pull forward. Pull forward and unplug. There you go. And then unplug this one. There you go. And it's all out. So seat belt, airbag, and weight sensor. Let's see if I can do this out. Ooh. All right, so to weigh this, I'm gonna use the uh, Tumi luggage uh, weight scale. It's pretty accurate, well it has to be because some airlines won't just, won't let you uh, do a carry-on when it's overweight. Okay, ready? Okay, it's off the ground and it's locking in at Thirty-nine and a half pounds, seventeen point eight or seventeen point nine kilos. It's, <laughs> it's, it's based on the uh, stats or the information given from Brit Japan, that already uh, itself is already eighteen kilos or seventeen kilos. So the factory sheet is going to be, I think, lighter. Okay, ready? You're going to go ahead and pick it up. Okay, ready, set to zero. Oh, it's definitely heavy. So there's really not much weight saving. It's 52 pounds or 20, uh, 23.6 kilos. So it's actually heavier. And I think that's based on <sighs> these rails that we uh, put in here. So that's uh, no good. No good for a race, but better for handling on hugging you. All right, so now I got the seat bolted in. Everything is all like nice and uh, it slides properly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the uh, factory uh, plugs. And don't forget your airbag canceller. Uh, it is a 2.2 ohm for the Civic Type R. Should be anyways, well, hopefully, well, hopefully for, my, for, uh, for my sake. So I'm gonna plug that in. There we go, this one. All right, so now we just plug in the seat belt or the passenger sensors, just like that. Now it should be all organized underneath here. We can go ahead and zip tie it, just so that it looks more presentable, more OEM look. Even though I know this is like a rat's ass right now, but uh, we'll, we'll I'll figure that out after. Let's just put it all in here for now. It's nice and tidy. I'm gonna just go ahead and try. It. Uh, sliding the seat back and forth, just make sure everything just fits properly, and then we're gonna do the driver side. Driver side should be easier because just we only have to deal with one sensor. Uh, when they're brand new, they're hard to slide here. Yep, that's good, nice. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Yeah, okay, that's good. Just make sure everything is not catching, which is not. All right, we're good to go. All right, so I took the bolts out, 
for the driver's side. Now we're going to go ahead and unplug the uh, seat belt again, which is blue. And then the seat position sensor is the white. Let's do the let's do the seat the uh, airbag here first. Airbag's always yellow. Okay, and now we can get to the. There we go, and there it's out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure or weigh the uh, eater first before we throw in the into the car. Any guesses on this one? Yeah, it's off the ground, and we are sitting at forty point one or eighteen point two kilos. So it's not too bad. It is a lot lighter, almost 10 pounds lighter than the other side. Okay. Okay, surprisingly, I think the uh, factory seats are a lot uh, lighter. Okay, let's go ahead and measure this. Ooh. Nope, this one's heavier. Okay, locked in. Okay, quickly show you guys. 44 and a half pounds, 20.2 kilos. So the driver's side, either is lighter, passenger side, I think it's because of the, uh, the, the rail that we put in that put it over the uh, weight of the stock seats. All right, again, so don't forget to get your 2.2 ohms and you can get that from Envision Auto Imports. Uh, that'll cancel your airbags. All right, clip it in and then let me go get the other seat and then uh, throw it in. So far, you guys, I uh, absolutely love this car. It's, uh, it's, you know, it was beyond my expectations. I didn't really expect a whole lot from the car. And uh, now that I've dialed in the uh, suspension and the RSR coilovers and wow, this, this thing handles phenomenal. Um, mid range on the RSRs uh, is a little, I think it's a little on the soft side. So I end up giving it about six more clicks to the hard. And now it's just, the dampening is unbelievable. Unbelievable. So if you guys do get a set of coilovers or RSRs, that's what I recommend. Just go to the mid, adjust it to the mid range, and then add at least five, five to, yeah, four to five, maybe like, like myself, six. And oh, you'd be just absolutely happy with it. Okay, let me just button up the front. And yeah, I just, Beyond my expectations, this car is unbelievable and uh, doesn't disappoint. The handling is phenomenal. If you guys get a chance to drive one or just even getting to own one, you won't regret it. It's phenomenal. But maybe not the inflated price, but if you can get it for MSRP, I'm telling you guys, love it. All right, I'm just gonna show you guys out here a little better here so it's better lighting. So this is where they, this is the seat possession sensor. So it should be this one. There we go. And this one is the seatbelt. Doing it with one hand here. Let me see if I can there, put you guys on my knees here. There we go. Plug that in. And the other sensor is your seatbelt canceller. But that's already done. I ended up buying this piece. Well, not buying. I just went to the junkyard and got this. Anyway, soldered the. Uh, uh, resistor here. Unfortunately, I ended up deleting the footage of Victor nicely doing it for me here, soldering it all in so it's all proper instead of just plugging it in. So yeah, sorry guys, that footage is gone. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and tuck it underneath here. And like I, like I said, I'm gonna adjust everything, make sure everything's smooth and uh, nicely uh, operating, and then zip tie everything up and make it look OEM plus. All right, so the last thing to do, we gotta plug in the battery and turn on the car. Hopefully no SRS engine, or sorry, not engine, but airbag lights and stuff light up. So that's the whole plan. So hopefully it works, you guys. All right, so when it comes to car guy life, nothing goes according to plan. So the uh, airbag light sen sensor or whatever, it came on and I'm assuming it's, we have to recalibrate the uh, weights on the other on the passenger side because it's a different weight it's obviously more so i'm hoping that will clear but you know when you're kind of uh, 
the battery on the Altel. I'm trying to diagnose it, what the problem is, and obviously I haven't used it for so long, it's dead. So now I'm just waiting for it to uh, charge up so that we can do run the diagnosis. So be right back, you guys. Hopefully this, yeah, it's hopefully it's nothing major. All right, so the install is actually all completed, but I just can't, uh, the Altel scanner for some reason won't connect to the ECU. Uh, so, cause basically, it's like a TPMS sensor. The weight sensors has to be registered to the ECU to recognize and it's a little more on a serious side because you're dealing with safety equipment, right? So for some reason, uh, it just won't connect. I can't clear. It says it can't initialize. So I can't initialize. So it's basically getting the ECU again to recognize the new weight sensors that I installed. Because uh, once we get back past that, and then you can calibrate it. Then once you calibrate the weight, and then we're all set and ready to go. So just waiting for a friend, gave a couple of phone calls. I did some research online and uh, apparently I need a, either a snap-on scan tool, like the heavy duty one, or go to the dealership. And so I called a couple of friends and it's Thanksgiving weekend. Um, I, we just won't be able to get it done until the following week. All right, since I have the seats out, I kind of noticed uh, there's a crease here and I know, and I did, a little searching around online. Uh, it's a known problem with the FK8 where there's a like, it's like a permanent crease in here. Like, uh, especially on this bolster too. You see this from hopping in and out of the car. This is from using the clutch. Uh, this is the driver's side seat. And uh, apparently it's a known case and I don't have a whole lot of mileage on mine. It's roughly 1600 kilometers right now and it's already creased up already. And I'm sure if I rub something or use some kind of, I don't know, not a cleaner or anything, because it's like a crease. Hopefully you can get rid of it, but over time, I think it's gonna look really, really ugly. All right, so I just wanna share with you guys some of the messages that pops up on the screen here. So obviously system initializing is because I unplugged the battery and that's, it'll clear itself up once I start driving. And of course this one, uh, some of the mental restraint system problem, see the dealer, and that's what we're gonna do. Just gonna head over there right now and uh, we have a friend that's gonna clear the code for us. Honestly, I don't know how people can just drive around with this message popping up every once in a while and it's just quite annoying and yeah, I don't know. I don't know how some people do it, but we're just gonna get it rectified. All right, so we're back from the dealership and all done. No more check engine lights, no seatbelt lights and no warnings. I'm telling you guys, this is sick. I'm so happy that it all worked out. Yeah, so we had to take it to the dealership and it did have to get recoded because uh, it just won't initialize. So you do need the dealership to do it. Uh, if you go my route, if you're buying a new set of new sensors that are not from the actual car, you will need to go the same route with me. But if you don't, uh, the original sensors will work. So let me just go and fire up the car. I'll get Johnny to sit on the other side just to show you guys everything works. You're gonna fire it up. There we go. Airbag light, gone. The, obviously the seat belt's there and the warning light is because I have the doors open, but amazing. Johnny's about uh, five, he's about 5'11", you guys. Oh. And it's, uh, he's, he's pretty, he's a pretty broad kind of guy. So it's pretty snug, eh? Don't think we'll be taking this on any road trips. <laughs> and look at that. Okay, close up the doors, Johnny, so that we get rid of this light. There you go, go ahead and Fasten the seat belts. Your seat belt's covered. Yeah, I just didn't, I didn't want to get it all scratched up. So you know you don't drive the car. There you go. No more seat belt lights. Look at that. Amazing, eh? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> you might give it a slide. You probably, yeah. Slides, eh? You gotta break it in. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Comfortable way. All right, look. A lot more snug than the factory. Yeah. <laughs> feels amazing, eh? We're gonna hit the racetrack. Yeah, feels amazing, look at that. So, everything works, you guys. So, I'm gonna just shut this off so we don't die. All right, so now you know how to actually set up aftermarket seats in a Honda FL5 or FK8 or 10th or 11th gen Civic. They do it the proper way where every sensor works properly and no engine lights or no check uh, no seatbelt lights or anything like that. So hope you guys benefit from the vlogs. If you do, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, 
Turn on the notification because we're going to be heading down to SEMA and there's going to be a lot of content that we're going to get there and maybe a lot of car parts ideas for the FL5. So I'm anticipating there's going to be a lot because last year there wasn't a whole many, like there wasn't a whole lot of FL5, not even one. But this year I'm, I'm guessing or I'm hoping there's going to be a lot. So tune in and uh, it's going to be exciting at the end of the month here and November is going to be really exciting. So don't forget. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.